you evil little midget. Come on, mate, Bo. We were just having us some fun. <laughs> Long ago, in a distant realm, Yang, a warrior, honed his skills with the Sad Flute Clan from his early years, aspiring to become the most adept swordsman. He successfully vanquished the rival clan's leader and fighters but faltered when faced with the chief's infant daughter, choosing not to end her life. This decision led Yang's own clan to turn against him, as their creed demanded the demise of every member of the opposing clan, even the child, for a true victory. Confronted by the anger of the Sad Flute and unable to trust even his maid, Yang demolished his dwelling and sailed to the USA, seeking sanctuary with his old ally, Smiley. Upon arriving in the town of Lode, Yang discovered that Smiley had passed away three years earlier. Meanwhile, back in Yang's homeland, Saddest Flute uncovered signs of Yang's departure and vowed to pursue him to America, gathering a cadre of their clan's skilled fighters. In Lode, suspicion shrouded Yang, particularly from Ron, the town's inebriated resident. The intricate web of Yang's past unfolded as he navigated this unfamiliar territory, grappling with the consequences of his decisions and the looming threat from his former clan. Nevertheless, Eight Ball, a member of the nearby circus, strikes up a friendship with Yang and guides him to Smiley's former laundry establishment, proposing that he lodges there with the child. In a surprising turn of events, Lin, a woman from the town, attacks Yang, mistakenly identifying him as a foe of Smiley. Once the confusion is cleared and Lin discovers Yang's association with Smiley, she extends an offer to teach him the intricacies of laundry operations, enabling him to manage the shop. Lin is well versed in the trade, having previously assisted Smiley in exchange for swordsmanship lessons. Given Yang's lack of knowledge regarding the infant's name, Lin christens her April. After restoring the shop from years of neglect, Yang inaugurates the business the following day. Faced with local teens attempting intimidation, Eight Ball steps in, extending an invitation for Yang and April to join a meal at the circus. Meanwhile, the circus performers engage in constructing a Ferris wheel, envisioning it as a draw for more visitors. Yang, observing Lin's less than adept knife throwing skills, inadvertently dampens her spirits. While Ron persists in expressing his disapproval of Yang, the rest of the troupe warmly embraces him. As the sun sets, Yang is drawn to Lin's home, where the unfamiliar strains of music captivate him. Lin, noticing his presence, invites him in to share the enchanting experience of opera music. This marks Yang's initial step toward embracing the simple pleasures of life, a journey that unfolds and expands over time. As the days pass, Yang finds joy in the mundane, relishing cleanliness, building connections, collaborating with locals, participating in games, savoring moments of solitude after a day's work, marveling at sunsets, and tending to a garden. The act of cultivating a garden becomes Yang's cherished pursuit, symbolizing creation over destruction. One day, upon spotting Lin at the town's graveyard, Yang seeks information from Eight Ball about her history. He discovers that years ago, a malevolent colonel, seeking amusement, targeted a younger Lin. In pursuit of seclusion, he guided her to a kitchen, where Lin, seizing an opportunity, flung scalding grease onto his face. As Lin made her escape, the colonel shot her. When her family tried to rescue her, they too fell victim to gunfire. It wasn't until the preparations for her burial that the townspeople discovered Lin miraculously survived. That night, Yang observed Lin's frustration as she playfully tossed stones with an accurate aim. Recognizing the source of her pent-up anger, Yang offered guidance, bringing her to the circus grounds for knife-throwing lessons. Yang identified that her true hurdle wasn't physical but rather concentration. To test this, he blindfolded Lin and challenged her to throw knives at him. Remarkably, she successfully landed each throw without causing harm. Thankful, Lin refers to him as Sad Flute, signifying her constant awareness of his identity through stories from Smiley. Intrigued, she asks about the clan's name, and Yang shares its grim origin, relating the gurgling sound of a slit throat to a mournful flute. Lin delves deeper into Yang's initial connection with the clan, prompting him to recount the tragic tale of his father's demise by a swordsman, which fueled a young and resentful Yang's pursuit of strength. Sensing Yang's sorrow, Lin presents him with a cherished necklace from her mother. This action triggers a poignant memory for Yang, reminiscent of his youth when his mentor, Saddest Flute, gifted him a puppy. Yang then reveals his single-edged sword, rendered unusable by being bound to its sheath, ensuring its somber history remains inactive. However, he wields twin short blades to continue Lin's combat training, a spectacle that piques Ron's interest. Concurrently, Saddest Flute and his clan forcefully seize control of a ship, ruthlessly eliminating its crew. Despite the vastness of America, Saddest Flute remains unfazed,
confident that he'll identify Yang when he inevitably draws his sword again. In Load, Yang's serene life endures as he addresses the mischievous antics of the town's adolescence, takes care of the townspeople's laundry, tends to his thriving garden, mentors Lin, and witnesses baby April's first steps. With Christmas approaching, the circus ensemble organizes a lavish celebration. While Yang joins the festivities, he declines to dance. Lin's request for a dance transforms into a sparring session, during which she momentarily outmatches Yang, seizing the opportunity to plant a kiss on him. Caught off guard, Yang remains silent. Out of nowhere, the colonel, now masked to hide the scars inflicted by Lin, descends upon the town with his entourage, causing chaos in Yang's garden. The joyous atmosphere turns sour as the colonel torments circus performers, using a clown for target practice. As Ron steps in, the colonel ensnares him with a whip, subjecting him to a cruel dragging ordeal. The colonel's sadistic actions persist when he seeks female companionship for the evening. In anticipation of Lin's potential retaliation, townspeople confine her to a basement, and Yang seizes her swords. Unbeknownst to them, Lin has a concealed blade in her footwear, allowing her to escape. Meanwhile, as Yang contemplates unleashing his dormant weapon, the colonel gathers the women, singling out a married lady. Her spouse's protective instincts lead to their tragic demise, pulling their grieving daughters into the colonel's malevolent grasp. The colonel's dinner faces a disturbance when Lin, disguised as a dancer, pretends to be a willing participant in his evening's entertainment. However, her true motive is to assassinate the colonel. When her attempt to escape is discovered, Yang recognizes it's time to unleash his sword's dormant power. This action catches the attention of Satis Flute, guiding him and his clan toward Yang's location. Lin's covert assassination plan against the colonel goes awry as he identifies her true identity from the beginning, confronting her with a loaded firearm. Firing a shot into the ceiling, the colonel summons his men to capture Lin, intending to impose himself on her. Yet, Yang's sudden entrance through a window disrupts the situation. He effortlessly dispatches the colonel's subordinates and is on the brink of eliminating the colonel when Lin steps in, insisting on dealing with the colonel herself. Using Lin as a human shield, the colonel forces her out through the window, escaping and reuniting with his gang. Chasing after him, Lin's refined skills allow her to accurately throw her knife, seemingly incapacitating him. However, upon closer inspection by the townspeople, the fallen man turns out to be a decoy, and the real colonel has escaped. Recognizing the looming threat of Satis Flute, Yang chooses to evacuate the town with April for her safety. Eight Ball, however, argues against leaving, anticipating the vengeful colonel's return with reinforcements. Despite doubts from the townspeople about Yang's ability to handle the situation alone, Eight Ball reveals a hidden advantage, Ron. As it happens, Ron's previous life as an outlaw means he possesses an arsenal of weapons, now concealed in the cemetery by Eight Ball. Confirming his impeccable marksmanship, Ron retrieves his weapons. Meanwhile, Lin confides in Yang, expressing her desire to join him in April once the chaos subsides. As Ron hands over his vintage cowboy attire to Yang for cleaning, the townsfolk prepare by setting explosive traps for the colonel's inevitable return. Yang and Ron connect, reminiscing about their shared history of transgressions. Ron, perceiving Yang's violent past through a metaphorical scent of blood, finds Yang reciprocating the sentiment. Their bond deepens as Ron shares his past, recounting his departure from a prosperous outlaw life prompted by a tragic event where rangers pursuing him killed his beloved wife. Her dying wish was for him to renounce violence, a vow he has honored. However, the current circumstances call for action, and Eight Ball assures Ron that his wife would have understood. Wrapping up their heartfelt conversation, Ron imparts wisdom to Yang, suggesting that true care for someone entails creating distance to spare them potential pain. Following this, Yang returns Lin's swords, providing her with instructions on the most effective points for an immediate fatality. His touch, both gentle and intense, sends shivers down Lin's spine. The next day, one of the teenagers seeks refuge with April in a basement. Meanwhile, Yang positions himself at the town's gateway, and Ron takes his vantage point on the Ferris wheel. As the colonel and his brigade make their entrance, they recklessly trample over the garden, setting off concealed dynamite. This results in a massive explosion that eliminates several of the colonel's men. The ensuing dust cloud offers Yang the perfect camouflage, allowing him to discreetly eliminate more foes. Advancing, the colonel's forces move toward the circus area, only to encounter exploding carnival contraptions. Positioned atop the ferris wheel, Ron takes shots at the assailants, and as they attempt to ascend the wheel to confront him, circus performers intervene by firing at the intruders. While Yang continues his covert offensive, Ron depletes his ammunition and makes a getaway via a zip line. The climactic detonation of the ferris wheel follows, causing widespread devastation. 
Emerging from their hideouts, the circus performers mistakenly believe they have achieved victory. However, the colonel and a few of his men have survived. A deadly confrontation ensues, further intensified by the unexpected arrival of Satis Flute and his sword-wielding warriors. Bullets clash with blades as Yang directs Lin to escape with April. He plunges into the melee, combating foes from both factions. As the colonel focuses on Lin and April, they find themselves cornered. In a desperate move, Lin entrusts Eight Ball with the safety of April while she joins Yang in combat. After overcoming nearby adversaries, the duo's search for Eight Ball concludes with the grim discovery of his demise at the hands of the colonel, who has also abducted April. Seeking refuge in a hotel room and fortifying himself with guards, the colonel soon faces the advancing warriors of Satis Flute. However, it is Yang who breaches the defenses, incapacitating the guards. Within moments, Yang confronts the colonel, skillfully disarming him and rescuing April. Rather than delivering the fatal blow himself, Yang allows Lin to face her nemesis. The ensuing duel initially favors the colonel, but Lin gains the upper hand, ultimately defeating the colonel and fulfilling her quest for vengeance. Subsequently, a confrontation unfolds between Yang and his former mentor, Saddest Flute, who remains steadfast in the belief that April must perish, seeing her as a perpetual adversary. Saddest Flute questions Yang's ability to confront him, considering him weak-hearted. He reminisces about a young Yang's reluctance to follow an order to harm a dog and his incapacity, as an adult, to harm an infant. However, Yang's determination to protect his loved ones drives him to take the decisive step of eliminating his mentor. As Saddest Flute meets his end, he expresses admiration for Yang. With the conflict resolved, Yang prepares to depart. Following Ron's advice, he not only leaves Lin behind but also entrusts April's care to the circus ensemble, hoping to spare her a life marked by danger. Several months later, Yang is found dwelling in a cold landscape, sustaining himself through fishing. Unfortunately, this tranquility is disrupted by the arrival of an assassin. After dealing with the threat, Yang retrieves his sword and the cherished necklace given by Lin. He then sets his dwelling ablaze, destroying it along with a newly acquired opera record. As he leaves, he encounters additional adversaries from the Sad Flute clan, indicating that his pursuit of a peaceful sanctuary remains elusive. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.